All right, in section 5.2, we're going to do a quick review of the properties of logarithmic functions. If you need more than this quick review to remember how to work with logarithmic functions, there are two or three review videos posted in D2L to help you with a further background on these types of functions. All right, to explain logarithms, I'm going to actually um, go back a little bit to the idea I'm going to go to a different page. We're going to go back to the idea of what an exponential function is um, and how it relates to a logarithmic function. So first of all, an exponential function is a function that has a positive base and then it has an exponent that is a variable. So if we were to work with this exponential function, if I put in an x value, it becomes the exponent on the given base. So 2 to the negative 3 power. And we know that that's 1 to the positive 2 thirds power or 1 eighth. So if I put in a negative 2, 2 to the negative 2 power becomes 1 over 2 squared, making it a positive exponent, and we would get 1 fourth. 2 to the negative 1 power becomes 1 over 2 to the positive power, which is 1 half. Any uh, base to the 0 power is 1. 2 to the power of 1, we would get 2, and then 2 squared, of course, we would get 4. So how does this relate to the x to the logarithmic function? Well, the logarithmic function is the inverse function of the exponential. So what that means is that the exponential will spit out all of these y values, and what the logarithmic function does is it takes all of those y values that the logarithmic function spit out, and it takes them in as its input values. So what we're then going to evaluate is what is log base 2 of 1 eighth. And what is log base 2 of 1 fourth? So these are the, these become the input values into what we call the log function. Now what an inverse function does is that all of these y values become the x values for the inverse function. And all of the x values that we originally put in now become the output values or the y values for the inverse function. So for example, log base 2 of 1 8 becomes negative 3 as an answer. Log base 2 of 1 4, the answer for that is negative 2. Log base 2 of 1 half is negative 1. Um, log base 2 of 1 becomes 0 as the answer for the log. If I evaluate log base 2 of 2, then I get back 1. If I evaluate log base 2 of 4, then I get back 2. So what is a log actually doing? So here's what a log does. A log looks at the input. So let's take this one for example. And it says, this base raised to what power would give me the input of the log? One, uh, to give me the input of log 4. So we take the base and we raise it to what power, that's what we want to know, and how do we get then the input of that log is the question. Well in this case I would have to raise 2 to the power of 2 to get to 4. So that becomes the answer to the log. The answer is always the required exponent on the base to obtain the input of that log. So 2 to what power would give me 4? The answer would be 2. So let's do another one. Um, what about log base 2 of 2? What would that equal? So we'd have to take the base of the log and say 2 to what power would give me to the input of the log, so that number that's in the parentheses. Well, obviously, if I raise 2 to the power of 1, then I get back to 2. So the exponent would have to be 1, so the answer for the log is 1. All right. So that's the, kind of the basic idea of what a log is. Now, what I would like to do is to talk a little bit more about exponentials. Okay, so a really important idea that we're going to be working with is that when we work with exponential functions, so let's go ahead and write this down here. When we work with exponential functions, um, a base, actually, I think that's all I needed. All right, so let's get back to our notes, okay? So we talked a little bit about a, what a log is, um, and now we're going to work with some of the properties of logs. 
Okay. So some of the properties of logs are, well, if I have two values uh, multiplied inside of a single log, so here's my input for the log, and I have m times n, so we call that a product. If we have that in the input of a log, of a single log, then what we can actually do is we can expand this um, into two logs. The logs, these two logs would have to have the same base, and each of those factors would actually get their own log. So what the key here is for this property, for this law of logarithms, is that if you're multiplying between two values on the input of a log, then you can give those values their own separate log where you're adding in between them. All right. If we have a fraction inside of a log, and this is where this rule becomes really nice, if we have a fraction, so we're dividing inside a single log, what we can actually do is we can put the numerator into its own log, and we can put the denominator also into its own log. And between the logs now we are subtracting. So if you have a line inside, then you're going to have a line between them on the outside. Okay, so we can think about that. And it's always the numerator minus the denominator. So the denominator goes into the negative log. All right, and the last one um, that's really helpful here is if we have all of the input inside of the log raised to the same power, then we can actually bring that power and multiply it times the front of the log. So this is called our power rule for logs. So this one is called the product rule for logs. This is called the quotient rule for logs because it deals with fractions. And this is called the power rule for logs. Now these rules kind of sound a lot like our rules for taking derivatives. One thing that you want to be really careful about as we go forward is that none of these rules are talking about taking a derivative. Okay, These are rules that apply to the log function. We have not taken a derivative. None of these things apply to the idea of a derivative. They're just simplifying logs. All right. Now, um, 4 and 5 um, apply to any log of any base. So if I have, let's say for example, let's say I have log base 5. And the input, what we want to say is the input is 1. We want to know what the answer would have to be. Well, what we're asking ourselves is 5, the base of the log raised to what power would get me an answer of 1. And of course, it doesn't matter what the base is, any base raised to what power is going to give me 1, the answer would always be 0. So we want to keep that in mind. That's a really important rule there. Um, what about log base b of b, and why does that equal 1? So let, here's another example, log base 5 of 5. So here's the base of 5, and inside the log we also have another base of 5. The question is, okay, well, the base of the log 5 raised to what power would give me the input of the log? Well, 5 raised to what power would give me 5? Well, the answer would has, have to be 1. It doesn't matter what the base is, um, the answer would always be 1 if the input of the log and the base of the log match. All right. One more little review before we go in to do some examples. Uh, when you see log without a base, so there's not a little base to the bottom right, that's an implied log base 10. And when you see the letters LN, that's log natural or natural log, the base of that log is E. That's our, what we call the natural base. We're going to talk more about that later, but the natural base is approximately 2.72. It's kind of like how pi is 3.14, the base uh, E, that's called our natural base, that's approximately 2.72. Okay, it's a very useful number, and we're going to look more at that later on. But you want to keep in mind that LN, when you say LN, that's the same thing as log base E. All right. So let's look at some examples that are going to use these rules. All right, so simplifying uh, helps a lot when we start to look at eventually looking at taking derivatives of logs. It helps because we can simplify things before we take the derivative. Okay. Keep in mind that what we're doing here is not taking a derivative. We're not taking derivatives, we're reviewing simplifying logs. Okay. Um, so here we're asked to expand the log, and expanding means from going from one log to many logs. So if I go from one to many, all of these are expanding. Um, then we want to simplify as much as we can. All right, so in this log, we have x times, and then it's being multiplied times the parentheses that's being raised to the power of 4. Now, can we apply rule 3 
and take that exponent and bring it to the front of the log? And the answer is no. Why? Well, what is being raised, when we look at this example one, what is being raised to the power of 4? The only thing that's actually being raised to the power of 4 is what's in the parentheses. This x is not being raised to the power of 4. Rule number 3 only works if all of the input is raised to the exact same power. So what do we do in order to use that rule eventually? Well, what we're going to use is rule, rule 1. We're going to use the product rule here. So what we're going to do is we're going to write log and log, and we're going to add in between. So our product rule says if you're multiplying on the inside, we're going to add on the outside. We have two logs of the same base. It doesn't have a little number at the bottom right, so we assume log base 10. So the first, the first uh, factor is going to go into its own log, and the second factor will also go into its own log. So we'll put it as x plus 1 to the power of 4. So this is simplified about as much as it can be. Log of x. Nothing really can do there. In this log, we have all of our input now raised to the same power of 4 because it applied to the x plus 1, that entire expression. So now what we can do, since it applies to everything, is we can actually bring that, that uh, exponent to the front of the log. So we're going to multiply it times the front of the log. It becomes a big regular 4. So it's 4 times log of x plus 1. And now we don't have an exponent on that input for that log anymore. All right, so that's as good as that gets. And this is called expanding the log. This number here, this 4, is called the coefficient of that log because it's out front, a number out front of that log expression. OK, so this is called expanding. And we used rule number 1 there, the product rule. And then we also used uh, rule number 3, that power rule, to bring that exponent to the front of the log. All right, so let's look at our next example. We have ln, or natural log, of x times e to the negative x squared power. Notice that we're multiplying in between those, and this exponent, negative x squared, only applies to e. It does not apply to the x. So first of all, we're going to use the product rule to separate them. So it's going to be natural log of x plus, remember, multiplying on the inside implies adding between the two logs on the outside. And so we're going to write e to the negative x squared power in its own log. Now that we've done that, we can take the exponent, since all of this is being raised to the same power, and we can multiply it times the front of that one log. So we have natural log of x plus, and now we're going to bring this to the front. So that's negative x squared times the front of the log. So that's ln, our natural log, and then on the input now, we're just left with that base of e. All right. So we're going to simplify a little bit more. So natural log of x, and this is a negative x squared, so I'm just going to write that as negative x squared. What about ln of e? What about ln of e? So natural log of e. Well, what is natural log? Natural log is log based e. And the input for that log is e. Now what do we say? If the base of the log and the base of the input match, then we're going to get 1. So natural log of e is 1, so that's times 1, and we can write that even nicer. That would be natural log of x minus x squared. So those would be our two terms. It's a lot simpler than what we started out with. and would be a lot easier to find a derivative of that when we get to that section. All right, so we're going to look at some more interesting problems here. So here we have a log, we have a square root of x plus 1 on top, and then on the denominator we have x squared plus 1. We want to look at expanding this. Now remember when we have a fraction, when we have a line on the inside, we're going to have a line on the outside. So dividing on the inside means that we're going to be subtracting between the two logs on the outside. Okay, what goes in the first one, the positive one? Well, that's the numerator, so that's the square root of x plus 1. And then the denominator goes into the negative log, so x squared plus 1. Okay, what else can we do? Well, we know that the square root of anything is that raised to the 1 half power. So we're going to rewrite that with an exponent. So what do we do now? Well, all of this input is being raised to the same power, so we'll f we're free to bring that to the front of the log. So now it's 1 half times log of that input, x plus 1. We don't have the exponent anymore there because we brought it to the front, minus log of x squared plus 1. And there's nothing we can do here. 
Okay, keep that in mind, we can't bring the 2 to the front here because not all of the input is being squared, just the x is being squared. And we don't have a rule to break up a sum inside of a single log. So this is actually as good as that is going to get. So that's expanding that log as much as we can. All right, for our last example, we have ln, uh, natural log, and then we have e to the x divided by 1 plus e to the x. So we notice that we have a division line there, and a line on the inside of that fraction implies subtracting. I have a line in between the two logs. So dividing on the inside implies subtraction on the outside between the two logs. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the numerator into the positive log, and we're going to put the denominator into the negative log. All right, we want to simplify as much as you can. We have natural log of e to the x, and remember that natural log is log base e of e to the x power. So if I was to simplify here, I would say e to what power would give me to e to the x power? So obviously here the answer would have to be x, because x e to the x is the only way that I'm going to be able to equal e to the x. So this actually simplifies to just be x. The shortcut for this is when you see a natural log, when the base of the log and the base of the input match, they end up canceling each other out. So ln, natural log, when the inside is e. We have that base of e. These cancel out and we're left with just the exponent, so that's a shortcut. So we have e to the x, um, that simplifies to x, minus the natural log of 1 plus e to the x. So the question might be, can we bring this x to the front of the log? And the answer is no, because the only thing this x applies to is e. It does not apply as the exponent for everything that is the input for this log. So this is as simple as that gets.